Hello, music freaks. This is your host, Paul Gomatic. So, what's the matter with this new video format? Well, it's been a year or so since I wanted to make a web series about music. Though, it took a more streamlined point of view with this new installation through the kaleidoscope. We'll discuss about music and delve into some more obscure genres, including fan requests. And I said we, because I really want this thing to be a real conversation between me and a viewer, which is you. Clara Varna, Helios, slash Unseen Music, Apollo Vermouth, Loris Cacco and In Atoms are the ambient artists of a bandcamp we'll discuss in this episode of Through the Kaleidoscope. So enough chit chat, let's dive right into it. First off, we got Clara Varna. I hope this is the correct pronunciation. If not, I'm really sorry, Clara. Her musical background sees her as a percussionist and drummer for the post rock band Infinity Shred, and has appeared as the former in many film scores, such as The Fate of the Furious and. Wait, what? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's right. She appeared as one of the percussionists in Brian Tyler's score for the aforementioned film. So everything in her career points away from the ambient scene. But that doesn't mean Clara is impractical of the genre, as she builds some really particular textures in her spare time. I want to focus more on her latest project, Hollow Siren, that was featured on Bandcamp's Best New Ambient Music, July 2018. Link in the description. The project features binaural field recordings, haunting scenes and classical music samples. Everything here melts and rebuilds itself, I can see Clara's involvement in film scores, as some of these tracks, such as Rousseau Rouge and Victoria Tunnel, really feel like they come straight out of a doomsday film with this sort of impending apocalypse vibe that these tracks provide. I love how in the former track the vocals and synths drop abruptly just to leave space to a violin ensemble sample, and then return, culminating in the song's climax. In the latter one, we're presented with what seems like a Richard Wagner sample, though I could be wrong, and then BAM! Out of nowhere these aggressive, trumpet-like synths come in and settle down as they fade away, replaced by some haunting high-pitched violin samples coupled with field recordings of the suburbs of an unknown city. The ending to Victoria Tunnel is just breathtaking. It's a bond between these emotional cellos crushed by a pipe organ that leaves me in a cathartic state. These classical music samples really feel one with the experimental ambient synths, thanks to, once again, Clara's experience in the field since she has played with the International Contemporary Ensemble and the American Modern Ensemble. I won't lie, at first, if you haven't come to this project prepared, you feel disoriented and look at it as a complete mess but give it time and will soon unfold before your eyes in a couple of days. Now with the big one on this list, Helios, aka Keith Kenneth, is a multi-instrumentalist and composer. He has wrote music for very big companies such as Google, Amazon, Instagram, Warner Brothers, Apple, Facebook, Paramount Pictures, HBO, Volkswagen and many others. You know, it's weird digging through Bandcamp, look at a cool cover art, by the way, that's how you're supposed to find music on the website, and then finding out that the artist has worked with such big names. Anyway, today we're taking a look at his latest album, Veriditas, which is a Latin word coined by Hildegard. That means physical and spiritual healing through nature, which is a kind of philosophy I am very interested in. Keith has chosen this title for his release quite well, if I have to say so myself. In fact, this album is filled with pastoral and ethereal tones. I found much peace and also loneliness while listening to Keith's music. As he states on his Bandcamp page for the release, he has recorded the tracks at night when things are calmer, so it's easy to see why these vibes are so dominant within Veriditas. What strikes me the most about this album 
is the perfect assimilation of analog and digital sounds. It's really something that strikes your ears and caresses them gently as you go along this journey. Journey is the right word to describe this walk. We can see this marriage of sounds realized in songs like North Wind and Toward You. The format is a beautiful piece dominated by deep pads and evolving high-pitched screeching scenes. I know this sounds awful on paper, but trust me, it's a really good track. And the latter... Well, let's just say I thought I'd play Tico by accident. It's a track led by mellow and washed out guitars. Overall, I found this album to be more accessible thanks to the fact that these tracks are short and to the point. More in line with a traditional ambient record. So if you're a new fellow to ambient music, check this project and you won't be disappointed. We reach my favorite of the bunch, Apollo Vermouth, aka Alisa Rodriguez, another female artist in the ambient scene. Here's a little bit of trivia for you. I recently found out through YouTube analytics that as of today, 70% of my viewers are indeed female. Interesting, I've always felt that electronic music was more of a guy's genre, but I was wrong. So what do you guys, let's not forget about that 30% of my viewers, and girls think about this topic. Is electronic music in general lean more towards a male or female audience? Anyway, let's dive into Apollo's music. Her catalog counts many releases such as Burning in Heaven, her first album, and Fractured Youth, one of my favorites among the 7 inches split. We'll discuss her latest release, Crashing into Nowhere. In fact, to me this project feels far more realized and interesting than her prior full-length release, Fractured Youth. Though her signature sound is still there, echoing walls of reverb and noise that create distorted landscapes of pure bliss. That's how much I love Apollo's music. When I first heard the term ambient noise, I was kinda skeptical, but that's the right word to describe this type of music. Alisa also brings something new to the table that not always appears on ambient records, that's called vocals. In this case, brought to you by Travis Johnson on the track Always There and Eli Smith on Reflections Of. Let's talk about these tracks in particular. The first track I mentioned is characterized by unbelievable warm but sad vibes, reminiscent of a Radiohead song if that makes any sense. Even the vocals, just as the guitar loops, are soaked in reverb and delay, except for that hi-hat that follows us right till the end while not resulting redundant. The second track mentioned, Reflections Of, also brings another element we haven't seen since her first release called drums. <laughs> this time not just a single hi-hat, but a full fleshed out drum pattern. I got to admit that Eli does a great job with his washed out dreamy vocals, coupled with what seems like a bell sample from a 70s commercial. If anytime soon pop music will change in some way, I really want it to be like these two songs. In the end, crashing into nowhere feels like a distant journey of noise, the good one, and guitar loops that are just right to chill out and ponder about your life. I even shared some emails with Eliza and she said that the song He Dreamed of Blue Skies is a collaboration with the artist Wretched Excess and is a reference to I'm Going Home from the 1975 film The Rocky Horror Picture Show and it was one of the first songs she recorded for the album. Seriously, give Alisa Rodriguez a shot, she's a noise master. This time I won't butcher any names, as my next pick is the New York-based 360 Degrees artist Loris Cacco. Another female protagonist in our ambient journey. Lori's career is so intricate and interesting that it will take hours to talk about it. She has experience in film scores, classical dance and performances and has worked with the ensemble Savath plus Savalas. Today we're talking about her latest release, The Zyloop. This project is amazing, let me tell you. It manages to create intricate textures using minimal melodies and loops. It's like singing ants walking and building their cities through a magnifying glass. This album has both a serious and easygoing vibe to it, often making use of wobbly and echoing synths, 
that swell and disappear in favor of others in a seamless and natural way. One concept in particular struck me while looking at the Bandcamp's page for this album. As Laura states, I wanted to provide a vehicle for the listener to impart their own emotional experience without imposing my own meaning. And that's one thing to admire, a concept I've used myself many times, but that's maybe for another video. This album feels very intimate and heartwarming, especially in tracks like Strange Cities and the closing track Other Flowers. The first one leads the way utilizing percussive delayed scenes that rise and fall followed moments later by a comforting and mellow lead and warm parts that unfold and evolve as time goes by, creating an intricate web of sounds. This track kinda resembles a mixture between a classical music piece made out of improvised recordings and electronic music, further adding to the seamless flow present in the entire album. The second track mentioned is a great closing track for the album. It's melancholic and heart wrenching Other flowers ties together all the themes touched during the half an hour or so of music this project offers, which is a great feature for a closing track. The mellow pads repeating this haunting and sad melody over and over just to glitch and distort halfway through the track and then return to resolve in the song's climax. This project has much to offer, but isn't very overwhelming to a first time listener, making this album a very pleasant experience. So, before reaching our final ambient artist of Bandcamp, I wanted to share some honorable mentions, albums that you may want to listen to along the other ones I suggested you. First off, we got Echoes of Science by Ambidextrous. Yes, it's not a 100% ambient album, but it's got its fair share of ambient moments throughout, as the artist is mainly known for his more ambient stuff like the Muted Airways EP. Anyway, this release has got a really melancholic and, and mellow vibe to it, much in line with Otecre and Boards of Canada's sounds. No wonder he put an hexagon on his cover art, he's like, so original. <laughs> My next pick is, oh god, this episode will get some foreign viewers crazy, so why not let him, my friend say it for me? Say it, bud! by Linuissa. I'll read what their Bandcamp page states as it's very self-explanatory. Quote, the duo slowly builds static motifs and explore extended chord harmonies around each other. There are moments of minimal stillness mixed in with bursts of noise and gated chords. At the heart of the project is a celebration of astral and transcendent jazz, as well as music and expression as meditation." End quote. To sum up, it's a really delightful experience throughout, and it's just plus ambient, what do you want more? Also, you might want to check their latest album that came out in August called, well, say it but... Thanks. At last, In Atoms. One of the first artists I found out thanks to Bandcamp. I remember I was searching for boards of Canada like musicians but couldn't find none. Three years later, and I found some, but we'll talk about this in a later episode. I stumbled on his Bandcamp page and listened to a couple of tracks. The sad thing was that their discography stopped in 2014. That's what I thought until yesterday while trying to find some more information about this project. In fact, I found out they're still making music as of today. Because I couldn't find many information regarding Interatoms, not even on their web page, I decided to wrote to their Instagram profile to no avail because they didn't reply me. The release we're looking at today is Cannibals, their second album. I realized just now how many classical music influences we've got in this list. This project was recorded live and is divided in three parts. As I just said, this project borrows heavy influences from classical music, especially within the instrument choices, meshed with pure ambient characteristics like long echoing pads. The three parts revolve around one singular idea or chord, but these elements are further fleshed out with each passing second in a very intelligent and pleasing way. Nothing too intrusive or too simplistic is added to what is already there, creating wonderful carpets of sound. I think the title for this album isn't out of place either. In fact, these three excerpts 
especially the second one, feel like they would go hand in hand with an old BBC documentary about some kind of indigenous tribe that still practices cannibalism. I mentioned the second excerpt a moment ago, and I must say it's my favorite out of them all. It's got this rumbling bass bed, accompanied by this strange and eerie sample that resembles a loud cry for help. That's how strange it is. Overall, a very atmospheric piece, and it's even the shortest of the three parts, clocking about three and a half minutes. The album ends with a more emotional seven minutes piece that would be perfect for a dystopian post apocalyptic scenario. Standing at the edge of the world as palaces burn, except free, blaze. I love how the various recordings of what seem like strange instruments accumulate one on top of the other one to form one giant block of sound that slowly fades away, leaving behind little sparks of light. It's a really sophisticated ambient album that needs repeat listens to fully appreciate it, though it has a very distinct soul that leaves you with the urge to hear more about In Atoms music. So, that wraps up our first episode of Through the Kaleidoscope, where we learned that Bandcamp has some really good ambient stuff up its sleeve. I really have faith in this project and I want to bring you more content, so please support me by subscribing and most of all, discuss about the various topics that I touched down in the comments below. Make sure to check all the artists mentioned and support them through their Bandcamp pages, all links in the description, including mine as well. Speaking of ambient music, here are a couple of LPs that came out in the mail. The new Gas album called Rausch and Ember by Otegre. These are very interesting albums that you also need to check out, especially on vinyl format as they sound really amazing. That's really it, thanks for joining me and have a good listening time. See you in the next episode of Through the Kaleidoscope.